morning. Welcome to this beginner low pressure fitness class. Um, is that loud enough for you all? My voice. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to begin today by just checking in with our forward bending. Um, it's nice sometimes to do a little pre and post test. Um, there are all different things you could look at, thoracic rotation, neck rotation, but this is an easy one to start with when you're standing. So let's just stand, look down at the ground, and slowly slide down like we want to touch the floor. We're going to notice how far our fingers get, how it feels, are we able to drop our head, or our knees bend, and then come back up, and we'll remember that for the end of class. Okay, does everyone have something they can kneel or sit on if they would like? Um, a towel roll, a bolster, a yoga block, anything like that. We're gonna start in sitting today. Um, and you, you may or may not need it to sit on for this. We'll do a little bit of rib cage and thoracic spine warm up. This low pressure fitness, even though we're creating the abdominal vacuum with the apnea, is really, we're really more focused on the breath work and the expansion of the rib cage. And so that's gonna help us mobilize that area, which can help a lot with neck and low back posture and decrease the amount of pressure in the belly and down on the pelvic floor. But mobilizing that area getting it moving before we start really working on the rib expansion can make doing the breathing and the apnea easier. So we're gonna do a little warm up here and sitting for that. And as long as we're here, let's cross our arms, um, turn our head to the left and keep looking behind us and notice how far we twist, keeping our sit bones in one spot. And then coming back to the center, looking to the right, and turning that way. So we can kind of remember that too. All right, let's take our arms. One is gonna come up towards the ceiling. The other is gonna reach down towards the floor and connect with the floor. Let that bottom arm kind of push and prop you up and then keep side bending that top arm over. And once you get over there, you're gonna take a breath into those ribs that are up towards the ceiling. And let that out, good. And then you can play with that arm. You can take it forward more, like you're going towards top of a clock and then breathe into the ribs there. Good, and now see, can you take that arm back behind you a little bit and breathe into the ribs there. Good. And then come back up to the middle. We're gonna switch sides. So other hand comes down to the floor. Top hand reaches first towards the ceiling like it's getting long. And then over to the other side. Breathing into the ribs there. And exhaling, you're using that bottom hand to kind of keep your hips glued down to the floor to increase that stretch. And then coming forward with that arm a little bit. Breathing into the ribs there. Exhale. Good. And then see if you need to take it back behind you. This is a tricky one to me. Good. Coming back up. Now let's plant that arm on the other side again and open the arms like a windmill or a large book. And then you're gonna bring the hands together and close the book and then open the book. So one more here. Good, coming back up to center, 
down to the other side, closing those arms and opening them. Getting a little more rotation through here, warming up the arms a little bit. Good. Back up to the center. Now let's take our hands, place them behind our heads. Okay. So your elbows are not so much your head as your neck. So come down to the base of the your head. So most of your your linked hands are kind of behind your neck, as long as this feels good. Or if this doesn't doesn't feel good, you don't have to do it. But it but it might feel really good. Elbows are kind of pointed forward. Okay. So what I want you to do is just tip your elbows. Don't do anything with your head and neck. Just think about tipping your elbows up towards the ceiling, feeling some of that extension more in the mid thoracic spine between the shoulder blades and coming back down. If you have any pinching, then you don't have to do that. But elbows are just tipping. So the neck is staying supported and secure. And we're kind of taking that extension more down into the rib cage. Good. Now, while your elbows are tipped up, can you point them to the left? And then bring them down. And then bring them back to the center. And then take the elbows up towards the ceiling. Point the elbows to the right. Point the elbows down, bring them back into the center, and then come back up. And then just try opening your elbows, gently pressing your head into your hands. We're kind of lengthening the back of the neck there. Very good. And coming down. Now let's find the inferior, this bottom part of our rib cage. And let's start on the left side. So we're gonna start kind of up where the, the ribs meet, but don't get too pokey right in the center. Come off to the side and just glide your fingers down the bottom edge of the ribs here. If it's hard to kind of get in there, working on sitting up tall and maybe sitting on something can be helpful. So you're kind of feeling along for any like little stickier spots. If you find an area, then see if you can sink your fingers in, maybe kind of slump over that to create a little slack so that you can kind of just work your fingers gently underneath those ribs a little bit. Just working to make a little space so that it's easier when we do our breath work. Now let's come on to the other side, same thing. Just sliding down. Not too deep, just sort of, we're sort of exploring, looking for any sticky spots. And then if you find one, let yourself sort of sink over that. See if that helps you gently kind of sink your fingers a little deeper. even take a little breath. Good. Okay, now coming up, let's do hands on the ribs here. And we're just checking in with our lateral costal breathing, which is as the diaphragm draws down, we're also actively opening the rib cage out to the side and up, like an umbrella opening up that way. So place your hands on the side so you can kind of feel this. And we're going to practice doing this slowly. So sometimes you might think, I'm going to try to take a big breath in. And then you're sort of left hanging and holding that for another three counts. So I want you to practice really slowly. It's almost think about, you've got several chunks of ribs there and you're gonna open one level, two level, three levels, four levels up as we do the breath, 
Okay. So breathing into your hands on the side. One, two, three, four. Now, as you exhale, slowly let it back out. Four, three, two, one. Very good. Let's do it again. I want you to notice what happens through your shoulders. Are you able to keep your shoulders down and relaxed as you slowly open the ribs? Okay, so one, two, three, four. And then exhale, think about the air coming from the bottom up. Four, three, two, one. Really nice. All right. Let's go ahead and get into an apnea here, since we're here. So a nice way to, um, legs are crossed, okay? Feet are gonna be dorsiflexed, okay? So your legs are, even though you're sitting here, they're kind of active, almost like the ankles are pulling against each other, like they wanna open the ring of your legs up, but they're gonna stay right there. And then we're going to take our arms into a low Athena position so that our, our fingers are pointed towards each other and they're touching our thigh here. Pressing down into the thigh and also the elbows are kind of pressing out and shoulders are pressing out. So it's like we're holding that open and feel how that pressure kind of helps you keep some space between your ribs and your pelvis there. So you've got some room to breathe. And then we're gonna do a three breath cycle here. So breathing in, two, three, four, and exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Breathing in. And out, breathing in for the last breath, in, exhale, at the bottom here, hold your breath, open your ribs, keep trying to Pull that open a little bit more. Keep the pressure through your hands. When you need to take a breath, exhale. Very good. Let's take a minute here, cross our arms, and let's check in with our thoracic rotation again. So you're gonna turn your head and shoulders to the left. Back to the center, head and shoulders to the right. Good. Hopefully that feels a little better. Is that a little better for people? A little more closer to you. Okay, let's move on to our backs. So we're gonna come into laying on our backs, legs are bent. So we're in this kind of hook line position. If you need a little something for your head or neck, then you could use a towel roll, a washcloth. What might make you feel like that is if when you come down and rest your head, if your chin is tilted back towards the wall behind you, then that's a sign that you may need a little support so that your head can stay in a more level or neutral position when you're laying there. Okay, so we worked a lot on uh, loosening up the mid back and thoracic spine. We're gonna come down a little more to the low back and pelvis and just give this area a little time to loosen up and kind of check in with our neuromuscular control and our postural positioning here. So I love the pelvic clock. So we're going to start there. 
Remember, you've got a clock down here. 12 is at the top, six is at the bottom, three and nine. So we're just gonna rock a few times between 12 and six. Nothing is lifting off of the floor here. It's just a movement where we're tipping that bowl of the pelvis up and kind of flattening the back a little bit and then rolling it towards the tailbone and the back is gonna arch a little bit. So this gives us a chance, one, to loosen up these areas, gives our brain an opportunity to see where it's difficult to move. And it gives us some time to connect with these muscles down here. Good, now let's go to three tonight. This one can be a little tricky because we're in the transverse plane. So if you're not sure, you can let your knees fall to the left and notice how one side of your pelvis falls down, the other goes up. Then the other way, left side goes up, right goes down. Now try to do that same movement with your pelvis, but keeping your knees in the same spot. So that's three to nine. And then we come to diagonals. Let's do one or two o'clock down to seven or eight. And then other way. If you have a diagonal that feels pinchy or a little painful, make your clock smaller and see if you're able to slowly inch the clock out a little bit more. And then we'll come up to 12 and let's go around the clock clockwise, hitting each number. And then we'll reverse that. And you may notice that your clock gets a little smushed in one spot or you have trouble really rounding it out. You can't quite hit every number. That's okay. It's just an area to notice and see if you can gain a little more access there. Good. Now let's slip our hands onto our bellies. And I'm gonna have you, if you're comfortable, you can even take your fingers and slip them under the waistband of your pants here so that the top part of your, the thumb is kind of like below your ribs on that top part of your belly. Hands are kind of coming around the side of the belly and then the fingertips are above your pubic bone. So you have almost like if you're holding a little, a kid sized ball, you just kind of enveloped your belly there. And I want us to, we're gonna use the clock again. And just think that about now, it's like you're holding the clock in your hands. You kind of cuff the clock. And I want you to very gently glide your belly down to six on the clock. You may not go very far. It might be just a centimeter or something. And then very gently glide your belly up to 12. If you've ever had any abdominal or pelvic surgeries, you might have some tension on the scar down there. And then come back to the center and let's gently glide over to nine. And over to three. None of this should be painful or pulling, just like a little tummy massage. Let's do the diagonals. Good. And then let's take our fingers over towards our right hip bone and just make some little circles coming up that side of your belly. When you get to the ribs, turn to the left, make some circles going that way. Then turn down towards your hip over on that left side and sweep across. Good, okay. So all of our abdominal contents are gonna affect the mobility and ease of moving our low back. So giving that area a little bit of really gentle massage can be helpful for that. And it's also kind of calming for the nervous system. Okay. I want you guys to try something here. If you've got that bolster yoga block or folded towel, 
then place it under your hips. If you don't, that's okay. You can just stay flat, but we're just going to elevate our hips here. So we're not putting pressure on the low back. It's just kind of behind our sacrum and hip bones. Legs are still bent. And we're going to practice a little apnea here. So we've got a little bit of guts kind of coming up into that diaphragm space in a way, and we're getting a little bit of lengthening and tractioning through the low back. Let's do three breaths here. You can have your arms wherever they feel comfortable, just gently out to the side. So we're going to breathe in and exhale. Breathing in exhaling last breath in exhale at the bottom here hold your breath open the ribs Slowly try to keep opening a little bit more, all from the ribs, no shoulders helping you. Take a breath as you need to, and then exhale. Very good. You can take the bolster out, bring your hips down, and just notice, we didn't, I didn't bring your attention to it before, but just notice how much of your back is in contact with the floor now. Has some of it maybe relaxed down? Do you feel a little bit longer through there or a little less, a little less pulled up off the mat, hopefully? Very good. Let's move into Demeter now, since we're here. So in Demeter, we're taking the legs out to about a 45 degree knee bend. Feet are coming back towards you, dorsiflex, toes pulling up towards your head. And then in this position, you give just a little push out the heels. So they're not sliding anywhere. You're just creating a little tension between your heels and the mat. That should kind of bring your pelvis into a fairly neutral position, not tucked totally flat and not really arched, just kind of in the middle there. Come up to your head and neck. You can even take your hands and give a little just a little tug through that occiput and rest your head down so it feels really lengthened through the back of the neck. And then we're going to take our arms down into a low venous position with the palms up. And the arms are always reaching wide. So think about your fingertips sort of giving a little reach to the corners of the room away from you. And here we'll do three breaths, breathing in and exhale. And in, exhale. On the exhale, you're lengthening. You're just thinking about growing longer and wider through your body. Last breath here, breathing in exhale. Hold your breath here. Open the ribs for the apnea. Breathe in as you need to and relax very good stay here you've got Demeter totally set up I want you to just rotate the palms so the palms are facing up towards the ceiling and the fingers are pointing towards each other so we're in mid Athena here at shoulder height open the hands so they are about shoulder width apart and you're thinking about reaching the elbows across to the walls and the hands are pressing out towards the ceiling. 
And we're breathing in and exhale. Breathing in. On the exhale, reach the head and the heels away from each other. Reach the shoulder blades away from your ears and out towards the wall. Last breath in. Exhale. Hold your breath at the bottom, open the ribs. Breathing in, exhaling, bringing the arms back down by your side. Very good. Now we're gonna transition from being on the floor here to standing up. So you may want to roll onto your side, press with your arms to bring yourself up to kind of a side sitting. And then let's try taking a breath in. If you're already up, that's awesome. Press up onto your hands and knees. And then we can come up into half kneeling and come on up if that works for you guys. Okay, so we just did a little Venus and Athena in Demeter, and now we're going to do it in standing. Everybody doing okay? Okay, so I'm doing great. So these positions, if you think about it, are very similar. It's just one is on the ground, so we have really a flat back and a lot of feedback from the mat, and now we're up against gravity which is gonna make the apnea or that breath in, we're gonna have a little more resistance because we're pulling the abdominal contents up against gravity. And we have a lot more room for kind of what can happen with our posture in standing. But we stand a lot, so it's good to be in this position. So feet are hip distance apart. Let's just kind of give our feet a little attention here. I want you to pull the toes Kind of up towards the ceiling here. And then I want you to see if you can put them down one at a time. So see if you can like get your pinky to widen and come down and then your, I guess what would be your ring toe, middle toe. And then last thing you're gonna kind of press that big toe down into the ground. Soften your knees. And then we're gonna come up to our pelvis here. So without the mat, we have to check in a little bit more with what is the position of the pelvis? Is it tipped forward? If we had a bowl of water, would it be spilling out forward? Would it be spilling out back? Or would it be kind of in the middle? So just see if you can kind of, in standing, rock your pelvis between that 12 and six position, just like we did on the floor and find what feels like a, just a comfortable lengthened position through there. It shouldn't be actively tucked with your butt, but just sort of lengthened through the back. Now it should come up to your rib cage. This is a little bit trickier. We want the rib cage stacked, but we don't want it, we'll think about a bell here. We don't want the bell tipped back that way. And we also don't want the bell really tipped up this way. So now leaving your pelvis in that kind of happy position, can you tip the bell on top of your pelvis a little bit and play with that position? A lot of times we have a lot of stiffness here and that makes um, dissociating these movements quite challenging. All right, so see, do the best you can kind of find what feels like the bell is tipped, the little the bell ringer would be straight down towards the ground and you're stacked on top of the pelvis. And then our head sometimes will end up kind of in front of our body here. So just, um, you can use your, your camera screen sometimes to kind of check this. Can you bring that crown of the head up towards the ceiling without tipping your 
your torso back. Okay. Arms are out to the side in that low venous position. They don't have to be right by your side. They can be forward a little bit, especially if you feel a lot of tension or tingling in your hands. Just bring them in front of the plane of your body a little bit so you're not so stretched there. The last piece of this is our axis forward. So at the ankles, you're just leaning forward a little bit. Okay, and your gaze is gonna be straight forward. And in this position, we're gonna breathe in and exhale. And on the exhale, you can really check in with kind of growing, like making sure that you still have space between the ribs and the pelvis there. And breathing in. And exhale. In again. And out. At the bottom here, hold your breath. Open the ribs. Breathing in, exhaling. You've done all this work to set up. I want you to stay here. Just bring the hands into mid Athena. So hands are pointed forward, fingertips towards each other, the width of your shoulders, pressing shoulder blades down and away from you. Breathing in. And exhale. And in. Exhaling. Last breath in. Opening those ribs like an umbrella. Exhaling, growing through the spine, staying long at the bottom. Hold your breath. Open the ribs, keep pulling, drawing them open, 365 degrees opening up. Breathing in, exhaling, don't lose your form here. If you can, bring your palms down to the crease of your hips. So thumbs are together now with your fingers. And that is the point that we're gonna bend over for Artemis. So back is staying flat and our butt is not transitioning back. It's like we're leaning on a railing and we're bending over that railing to peer over the side. We have a lot of confidence in this railing, okay? So now we've unloaded the belly so the apnea may get a little easier for you, but we're really working the back part of our body. This is an important thing to be able to do if you are deadlifting, doing any kind of squats, that kind of thing. All right, your eyes are gazing to the, where the wall meets the floor. And here we're gonna breathe in and exhale. Breathing in, you really, you may notice more of that posterior or back of the ribcage expansion in this position. Exhaling, keeping those shoulders slid away from the ears. Last breath in. Exhale. Keeping that back long at the bottom here. Hold your breath, open the ribs, create that apnea. Keep opening, keep pulling open, suctioning that belly up. And take a breath as you need to. Exhale from here. We're gonna try to stay in our flow. Glide your right 
foot, like it's on a railroad track behind you, maybe a foot or so, okay? Press that back heel back and the back and that back knee will be a little bent, okay? And our goal is that back heel up through the head is a straight line. So front knee is bent. This is a little bit of a balance jump. Hips are squared forward. So don't let that back hip get turned back like a yoga warrior position there. Hips are forward, front knee is bent, slight bend in the back knee. Try to have the leg wherever you can get the heel in contact with the floor. So if you have to bring it closer, that's fine. If you can go further behind you, that's fine. And then we're not bent forward. We're coming all the way straight off of that, like one line from that back heel to the crown of the head. Let's bring our hands down into low Venus, reaching them wide and then breathing in. Exhale. This is Freya, by the way. In again. Exhale. Last breath in. Exhale. Hold your breath, open the ribs, keep pulling open. You may get some nice stretching through the front of that back leg. Take a breath as you need to exhale, bring the right leg back even with the left. Bring the arms into a mid Athena. Now step the left foot back or whichever one you didn't use. Heel on the ground, slight bend in the knee. Check in with your hips that they're squared forward. Back is neutral, head is growing long off this long line of the back. Um, heel through the crown of the head. mid arms, gazing where the uh, wall meets the floor. Breathing in. And exhale. In again. Exhale. Last breath in. Exhale. Hold your breath. Open the ribs. Breathing in, exhale, bring the arms down and the foot back forward. Okay, we're gonna go down into a kneeling position. So let's do this with a little breath work and support. So we'll breathe in, exhale. You can come down to half kneeling if you want, or you could slide your hands down your legs. Breathe in again, reach for the floor and lower yourself down, two different options. Okay, we are gonna do a little kneeling and rocking here in half kneeling. So you may want something for your knees. If kneeling is just not an option, then you can move into the seated, seat, <coughs> pastia um, position. But okay, so let's tuck our, We've got our toes tucked for aura, okay? And just to open our feet up a little bit, if you can, see if you can sit back and then press yourself back up and really squeeze your bottom and notice stretching through the front of the hips and then sit back, a little bit of stretching through the bottom of the feet, pressing up, squeezing the bottom, and really trying to keep that neutral back position in spite of this tension in the front of the legs that you may have. Okay, 
So let's see your upright aura. Let's go into mid Athena position. You guys look great. Aura is a really nice place for opening up hip flexors, especially when we get the apnea. We're going to get an extra lift all through that fascia and connective tissue in the front of the hips. The other thing with aura is if you can, Try not to be really shifted back. Try to create a little axis forward. It's super tricky on the hamstrings, but try it if you can. Breathing in. Exhale. And in. Exhale, growing long, keeping that space between the ribcage and the pelvis. Last breath in, out, arms pressing wide. At the bottom here, hold your breath, open the ribs, keep pulling that open. Opening, opening, creating more space in your waist here. Keeping the hips pressed forward. Breathe in as you need to. Exhale. Good. Now take a breath in. Good. And on the exhale, we're going to start to shift your bottom back. And your arms are coming down towards the floor. We're going to try to slowly reach towards the floor there. So now we're in Gaia position. And right here, let's uncurl our hands for a minute, uncurl our toes, and just do a little bit of cat-cow. So round up, let your head drop down to the floor, press that mid back towards the ceiling, and allow the tailbone to kind of tuck under you. And then we're going to reverse that. So I want you to allow the thoracic or rib cage to drop between the shoulder blades. The tailbone is tipping up towards the ceiling. And your head is coming up just a little bit, whatever feels comfortable. Don't press that part too hard. Now, reverse it again. Tailbone tucks. Arms press the rib cage up. Head drops to the floor. Here, I want you to push with your arms, press yourself back a little bit, almost like you were headed towards child's pose, but we're not going that far. Feel how the stretch moves lower down in your back. Now take your hands, pull yourself forward. Feel how that stretch moves more up between the shoulder blades. Come back to center. Let the uh, ribs drop to the floor, head comes up to neutral, tailbone tips towards the ceiling. Now push with your arms back and feel that apex of that drop slinky curve move up your spine. Pull yourself forward and feel it move back, lower in your back. Maybe stretching your belly in a different place. Good. All right. Come back to the center. Just kind of wiggle that around a little bit. Tuck your toes again. Turn your palms towards each other. Hands are pressing into the mat and trying to spread the mat wide for Gaia. We have a little bit of pressure out through our heels, almost like you were trying to pop your legs up off the floor, but they're going to stay there. And in this position, our back and head are just neutral and flat, like an ironing board. And we're breathing in. Exhale. Good. Breathing in. Make sure you're shifting forward a little bit so you have pressure through the hands. Exhale. Last breath in. Exhale.
Open the ribs for the acne, holding the breath. Breathing in, exhaling, very good. Now let's cross our ankles and you can sit back now. Actually, you don't have to cross your ankles for this. You can just get a little child's pose in. And then cross your ankles and we're gonna press ourselves back into sitting. And then we're going to kind of reposition ourselves on the mat here and lower ourselves back down onto the mat. So the way we're going to do this, we've got our legs bent, hands behind you, okay? See if you can take a breath in. And then on the exhale, glide your arms out to the side and try slowly lowering your back all the way down to the mat. Very good. All right, we're gonna work a little bit with Aphrodite here. Get in a little spicy. Bring your feet closer to your body now, closer to your body. So they're gonna be more than 90 degrees bent and they're gonna be just a little bit wider than hip distance apart. You're still going to pull the toes up towards the ceiling and press your feet into the mat. And let's bring our arms up into more of a high Venus position here. So we're going above shoulder height if we're able to. Make sure that as you bring the arms up, your trunk or your ribcage is not getting lifted off of the mat. Try to keep it in contact with the mat and glide those arms up as you're able. So we're pushing through those feet. Arms are reaching towards the corners behind us. Head is going long and we're breathing in. And exhale. Breathing in. Feeling those ribs open wide out to the side. And on the exhale, we're reaching through those fingertips, pressing those feet away from us. Last breath in. Exhale. At the bottom here, you're preparing the apnea, holding your breath, opening the ribs. Breathing in and letting go. This is a nice one for getting a lot more pelvic organ lifting, I think. Let's do two more breaths here. On the second breath, we're going to do an apnea and we're going to press our hips up towards the ceiling. So I'll talk you through that. So we're breathing in. Exhaling. And in. Exhale at the bottom here. Hold your breath. Open the ribs for the apnea. Open wide. Press your heels into the floor. Press your knees away. You're keeping your back long, pressing the hips up. Take a breath here as you need to. And on the exhale, lower your hips back down, keeping your back long. Good 
Very good. Okay. Slide those legs out. Bring your hands behind your head and that for a little support. Close your eyes. And I want you to, with your eyes closed, just look to the left. Keep gazing to the left with your eyes closed. Good, bring your eyes back to the center. Now gaze to the right as far as you can with your eyes closed. Good, back to the center. Okay, so we need to check in with forward bending. We need to get you up off the floor. But come up to standing in a way that feels comfortable and gentle for you. And when you're ready, you're not to see or anything, let your head drop. Fly those hands down towards the floor. Notice where you get to. Oh, yeah. 